What is up everyone? It's DJ Rick Webb. Welcome back to the channel. Filming on the phone this morning. It's about 9.30 in the morning. I've been up uh, for quite a while now, you know, working around the house, getting some stuff ready to go for the weekend. It is currently Friday. Me and Hannah were busy all day yesterday getting the gear ready for all the guys this weekend. We have four different proms happening this weekend and two different weddings. So we have six total events this weekend, which if they were all weddings, wouldn't be too big of a deal. But because they're proms, there's a lot of logistics when it comes to gear involved. Two of those proms are on the, the massive side today. I'm currently heading over to the storage unit to pick up uh, some gear. We'll actually exchange some gear trying to clear up some space in the garage because we got so much gear nowadays and we're trying to utilize the storage unit to keep some of the gear we don't use as often to try and make ourselves a little bit more productive today uh, I'm gonna have Marcellus and Hannah with me we're heading to go do a 700 kid prom which uh, is quite a lot of logistics involved we're actually gonna stop by uh, Joe Bunn's place on the way over there I'm not sure if he'll actually be in but we're dropping off this spinning cold spark for him to do a video review on that we got from both lighting you guys don't know both lighting usa.com is one of our ventures so we're gonna go over there we also have the brand new both lighting tubes today you probably saw them in the thumbnail of this gig log we're gonna be using the tubes at the prom today we're gonna use the tubes tomorrow at my wedding I am not DJing the prom today. Both proms are actually happening both in Raleigh. One of the proms has four cold sparks. We're actually bringing the cold sparks for the team that's gonna go do that. That's gonna be Jordan and Show Out. Come along for a crazy weekend of logistics and I'm gonna try and film everything so that you guys can see what it's like being the owner of a company with five different DJs handling six different events in just two days. A lot of heavy logistics. So I'll have to show you the garage, but anyways. I'll meet you guys when we get to the storage unit. This is one of two storage units. We actually have another one right behind there, but trying to drop off some of the DJ gear, some of the additional trussing or staging. It's the stuff we don't use as often. The Mackies, I just did a review on. We're putting them in here to get them out of the way. And I'm picking up Burfa, AKA the turntable booth and the audio rack for the events I'm doing this weekend. Just trying to exchange some gear and get rolling for the weekend. All right, switched uh, back over to the actual camera. Not using the mic setup right now, just because um, it's a lot simpler in the mornings to do that. We'll switch over to the mic setup. When I get to it, I just Wanted to show you guys a little bit of what all is going on. If you can't tell, there's a, a lot of stuff going on in the garage. I'll show you everything, but the first thing I wanted to show you guys. So this is kind of a new gear system we've been working on. We have a lot more events going on than just this. But I got Hannah to create like these loadout sheets basically for each one of our events. And these are the events for tomorrow. So this one is Drake's. Drake doesn't own any of his own gear. He's my only DJ I got that literally owns a laptop and that's it. So he literally comes and picks up every last little bit of gear he needs. Now, tomorrow's prom that he's doing, he has a hedge wall, a neon sign, movers, up lights, LED foam sticks, totems, and a monogram, all for tomorrow, plus a, a decent sound system. He's actually gonna be taking the sound system that we're using tonight, tomorrow. Then over here, this is for another prom for tomorrow. This one has totems and movers, so we got the two movers in there, and the totems. This DJ actually has all of his sound system. He just needs to pick up the totems, movers, and four up lights, which are currently charging over there. Then this is for my wedding tomorrow. I got my LD Maui 44 G2s. I got my foam sticks for for my event and then part of my gear is in the trailer right now so when it comes to operating a very lean operation we try to do that as much as possible a lot of the gear that we're using today is going to be used tomorrow at different events so we have to shuffle around and work the logistics out to shuffle around that gear for the events tomorrow so like i said we got the up lights charging right here we actually now keep 16 up lights with our team in raleigh i have two djs that live in raleigh so they actually keep their own up lights and they're eventually going to keep those totems and movers as well just so they always have either totems movers or up lights ready to go for their events so they don't have to drive all the way to greensboro every single time to get their gear and that is a little bit of a horizon on the future of how i think we're going to be expanding fusion sound and lighting to different areas throughout north carolina and maybe other states we're probably going to function in a way as a having a general manager set up in each area, but command center will be based here. So we'll handle all the sales calls, we'll handle everything when it comes to expanding. So this is another plug. If you are in Raleigh, Charlotte, or just North Carolina in general, or Columbia, South Carolina, we're looking to expand and add more people to our repertoire. We actually just expanded our marketing into Greenville and Columbia, South Carolina, because that's where we're trying to push into is that region. So if you guys are 
are in Charlotte and want to join the Fusion Sound and Lighting team, send us over an email, info at fusionsoundandlighting.com. Send us your resume and we'll put you through the review process to see if you'll be willing basically to join the team or if you're cut out for the team. Basically, I'm assigning one of my DJs to become the general manager of Raleigh. He's gonna manage the FSL portion of the gear and the DJs in Raleigh to make sure they have all of their stuff for their events. And then here back at Command Center, we'll be managing all of the general managers and as well as basically booking all the events in a way. So it's a completely different twist on a multi-op. I don't really wanna have a big warehouse where we have a bunch of gear and whatnot. I want to literally have like designated people in different areas that either own all the gear that we're gonna need to shuffle around or they manage the FSL bot gear. But anyways, that's a look on the horizon. Let's look at the tubes. So I wanted to grab my tape measure right here. We got a case of IR4s as you can see up in the trailer. We're loading everything. But this right here, this is an eight unit two box from both lighting this is how big this thing is and i've got a tape measure out just to show you guys real quick this is not the full review that's coming eventually here but literally almost two inches shy of five foot long is this box it is a massive box it's got wheels actually on both sides which is kind of cool it's got handles on both ends and over here charging port on the side to charge all of them of course you have to open it to charge them but uh, we'll show you guys more of the tubes later i just want to show you guys how crazy big this box is there's um eight and a half inches tall and about 18 19 inches wide that's a case that's an eight unit case of IR4s right beside it, big box. I will mention there's also gonna be a four unit soft bag that'll be a little bit more condensed, but these tubes are by far the biggest tubes on the market. The actual tube itself you'll see later is like two inches around, which is bigger than any of the Astera tubes, and it's a 360 tube, so you don't have that bar on the back like you do with the Asteras. But we're bringing some gravity stands to actually put these up in the air, and we got all eight tubes today for the prom. We're bringing just one case of uplights, and we're bringing the wash movers out, as well as we're gonna be picking up some sound from my boy, Aaron that always helps us out with Apex. So we're gonna have four single 18 subwoofers, a pair of VRX 932 LAPs, and the SRX 815Ps for this 700 person problem. It's gonna be lit. All right, we're all loaded up. I will check in with you guys when we get to Bun headquarters. I haven't shown the truck that detailed. Shout out to my boy Mario over at Lux Shine hooking us up. We're actually in his in his town right now. We're we're over here in Raleigh. I don't know whose car this is. This is like I don't know whose that is. We just randomly stopped here and dropped off some stuff for this guy if you guys don't know this is joe bun bun headquarters they're literally about an hour 30 from us joe bun over here in raleigh dropped off a bow lighting spinning cold spark shoots two things it's pretty dope but uh now we're gonna head to lunch I'm going to bad daddy's got some good old burgers So we're on site at the event. We have the tubes right behind me all set up, rocking and rolling, all eight tubes are here. Wanted to show you guys a little bit of in-person. We're just running in auto mode right now to show you guys what these tubes are capable of. They are pretty dang bright. Also, they're huge. I don't know if you can put this into perspective, but I probably have already talked about this in the video, but these stand roughly just two inches shy of five foot tall. We have two of them up there on some stands. They have threaded mounts on the bottom and the top, which I probably talk about. And we have those just on some gravity stands up there. All eight of the tubes rock and rolling. We'll get some more footage tonight to show you guys, but this is just a little in-person at the event to show you guys what the tubes are like. What do you think so far, Marcel? These things are pretty massive. I'm about 6'4". Look at the height comparison. I'm like 6'8". <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm like 5'8". So these literally like stand like five foot tall. Yeah. Like four foot 10 is the length of them. So and that's the insane. thickness of them are pretty massive as well. Four of the powered VRX 918s. Two of them are ours. Two of them we rented for this weekend off my boy Aaron, who also gave us the VRX 932 LAPs powered up top. Those are insanely loud. Then we are we have our totems, Global Trust totems, but the outlets built into them. We have the both lighting. What are these? Aurora 1915. Aurora 1915s, yeah. Wash movers. IR4s, the best new uplights on the market right now. 
we we we've loved these fans. What's your you've been using them at the gigs? What's your experience with them I'll, so far? I like them. I mean, I haven't really ran into any issues, so no complaints this way. JBL SRX 815 is just this, some center fill. We have Audio World over there, and the turntable, Burf, Burfa. The tubes on the back here. We have two gravity stands, and then we have adapters that actually connect them on. It's literally just a standard uh, camera thread mount, which is like an M5. You can use a mic stand with an adapter and put them on them, or we're actually in contacts with both lighting and creating some stands from both lighting to actually put these up in the air. But we're, we're benefiting from the stage to add some variance in height, because normally that's what you want to do. We got my Razer laptop, team windows, and then we got the sound switch controller. We're rocking two Rain 12s with a Pioneer S9 mixer. Marcel's just glanced over, but if you guys saw in the sound switch video, we actually released on bowflightingusa.com. Um, Marcellus programmed all of the both lighting fixtures to work with our sound switch. So you can literally download the full program. It takes like two seconds to import it into your sound switch and you'll be up and running with full control of all of your lights via DMX. The tubes we're currently working on at sound switch literally just gave us the profile last night. One of the coolest things I like about sound switch is you more or less program the type of fixture, not each individual fixture. Yeah. So we program this for your wash or your pars and for all types of moving heads. Marcellus made a whole video if you have like the Chave Intimidator spots or ADJ focus spots, it takes literally like three, it takes maybe 30 minutes yeah. to set up your movers with our profile. Um, but all the programming is already done for you. So we program the fixture types. You can plug and play whatever fixtures you want. We just already set them up with all the both lighting fixtures. Pretty much a drag and drop system. Then there's a subscription service that you can literally every month, Marcel's answers questions to get it better and better. So anyways, gig time. See you soon. I guess I didn't film the back world a little bit, but this is kind of our back world, all blocked off. We're just getting started. Good vibes so far. Got all of our audio set up. We're running three different zones on the drive rack, right, or we're running three different zones on the drive rack right here. And that's broken into the lows being all the subs on one, the SRXs on the mids, and the highs being up top on this thing. Go watch my videos on the drive rack. Just because they're called low, mid, and high does not mean they're actually low, mid, and high. You can be, they can be full range, you can set them exactly to what you want. So this drive rack is actually connected to that Wi-Fi router that's tucked up underneath there. And then, over here on the iPad, I have the full controls of the DBX drive rack PA2. So if I go to crossover, you guys can actually see, this is our outputs right now. So our highs are cut off around 138 and up. The mids are going 81 and up, and then our lows are between all the way down below and cutting off about 75 hertz. And we have the, if you can see over there, we have the lows turned down. We can bring those up a little bit more later. Now I will say those crossover settings are not the best in the world, but these VRX subs, they really struggle with the higher end frequencies. I'm talking like from 80 to like, 100 to 120 they really do a bad job with those uh they, they like to pop so I, I always bring that crossover down as much as possible when you're standing in the back with the vrx's and the lowers you are missing a little bit of the frequencies between about that 90 to 120 range it sounds great i wish i had my mic set up here for you guys can hear it i preferenced it earlier but we are not running the tubes on dmx even though we just set it up and we were testing a little bit we're just going to run them on sound active tonight and give you guys um some feedback on how well they work we're going to try to use them specifically with this remote to see if you guys can also use them with just the remote and get cool effects so we just selected a solid color we have one as the master down here and we have it set up to do a strobe and all that so i'm basically gonna be over here pressing the buttons and controlling it and seeing how well it looks that's like half volume we're about to crank it all the way up Trying to leave. This is what we got left. Tubes look dope though. 
All right, happy Saturday, everybody. We're uh, we got back about 1:30 last night, and uh, we got a trade today. We uh, out here at Chickadee Hill Farms. You guys might have remembered I've done I think three weddings out here. They got a chapel over there. We're gonna be doing wedding in the woods over there, and we're set up outside. Thankfully today, it does not look like we're gonna have rain in the forecast. It's supposed to be in the 70s. We got a nice breeze going, which is awesome. Uh, we did bring the tubes again today. The tubes we're just trying out, but we got uh, spots, movers, ceremony. We got a nice little package today. We're gonna unload everything over to here, and uh, we'll catch up in a sec. We're fully set up, with the exception of we're taking some tubes upstairs and we're gonna go set up ceremony. You guys know, if you've watched any of my tip videos, I always say to go set up ceremony first. Now, I personally don't go by that rule and you don't have to go by that rule once you've been in business for a while. I mean, this is year 11 of me being a DJ and I know for a fact that we can go drop that ceremony set up and be set up in 10 minutes. And we have plenty of time. We always show up plenty of time before the event. What time is it right now? Like three o'clock. We don't start prelude until 4.30. We got an hour and a half. We got a pretty nice setup today. Got the LD Maui 44s today. We have the movers. We're using the MH150 white spots on the Global Trust Totems. We have four S4 uplights. We have the new tubes, of course. We're gonna put four up there as well. So we got two here, two at the back of the dance floor, and then we're gonna put two on feet there, and then we're gonna try and hang two of them down as well to try and add some variant to this. Not entirely sure how well that's gonna look, but we're gonna we're gonna play with it. Well, actually, I don't know if I recapped any yesterday, but our prom was insane. That was equivalent to Apex last year. And uh, the other prom went off well as well. Well as well, that doesn't work out. But today, uh, the team is also doing two more proms and two more weddings. We are doing one of the weddings. Marcellus has the other wedding. Drake and Casey are going to go do a prom with a lot of enhancements. They have a hedge wall neon sign. Uh, they did take a camera, so if they got any footage, I'll put it in here probably at the end of the video for you guys to watch what happened at their prom. And then um, Ralph's throwing one at Greensboro Day School. So busy, 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 busy week for FSL, and it, it doesn't stop. It's uh, We're in May, man. We're, well, this is the first the last weekend of April, we start May next week. It only gets more crazier from that. Ceremony area, by far one of the coolest ceremony areas that's on the property. And we're going right behind this right behind this tree on the left. Very pretty. All right, so we are in the ceremony location. I got Trey syncing up the, our mics. A little pro tips on ceremony. Have yourself good audio mics. We use two lapels at our events, but have mics that can scan for open available frequencies, and then we're able to sync them appropriately but you definitely want to have microphones in today's day and age that can scan for available frequencies and then sync with the available frequencies to avoid dropout. It's getting harder and harder every single year with the amount of radio stations and wireless frequencies and Wi-Fi and mobile networks and Amazon devices producing their own mesh networks and smart home networks to have good frequencies. So make sure you have something that can scan for available frequencies. And I'll give a plug, my boy Ben at NLFX Pro can help you guys determine what mics are gonna be the best for your region because there's different wireless frequencies that you have to deal with in each region. So go hit up NLFX Pro, ask for Ben or one of the experts over there and they can help you determine what mics are best for your area. Secondary thing, we are outdoors. So <coughs> these guys right here, they go on your lapels. It is a dead cat filter that will pretty much knock out all wind noise. Now I say all wind noise, but uh, I've done weddings out at the beach with those. It's still hard to knock out the wind on the beach that's pretty violent, but when it comes to like a light breeze or a decent breeze at a venue like this, it works very well. You can kind of see, we always try to set up off to the side, out of the way. So from, you know, down here, when they're taking photos coming down, we're pretty much blocked by the tree or they can position themselves accordingly. And also when it comes to speaker placement at the ceremony, I'm a big fan on the side. I don't like doing speakers up front, I don't like doing speakers in the back. I prefer to put it on the side. Now we're kind of on like a back corner here on the side, but putting the speaker on the side, I find yields the best results for everyone to be able to hear it equally, as well as avoiding putting too much sound pressure where the lapel microphones are at, avoiding feedback. That is kind of my tips for the ceremony. For today, little pro tips is to put your speaker on the side. That's what I found is best. If you want to be an overachiever, you can put a speaker on both sides and that yields an amazing sounding system. I did that for a wedding last year where we actually had four speakers going down each side. So it was like a stereo surround sound and you couldn't distinguish where the speaker is at. And also try to hide your speaker in general. I know like 
This is a wooden one, but hide your speaker, hide your stuff. You don't want to be seen at the ceremony. Again, ceremony, we're just doing audio, and in general, what's the rule of audio and speakers? You are supposed to hear it, not see it. So if we can have invisible speakers in the next 10 years, that'd be great. All right guys, fully changed, ready for today's wedding. We have Emily and James today, or JT as he likes to be called. So we have our ceremony audio set up over here. It's pretty much the same thing you've seen in every single video that I've ever done. We have two Audio-Technica 3000 fourth gens back here, Yamaha mixer. This is actually a Rockville table, and we put a scrim over it. We have my laptop. We have two of the lapels that we're gonna be using. Our Maui 5 Go, LD Systems Maui 5 Go is over here tucked away. We're ready to rock out the ceremony. So we're gonna go back to the reception real quick and show you guys what all we're using there. And then we're gonna get this thing started. All right guys, we're over here at the reception portion of tonight. We are doing it outside. The weather seems to be clear for most of the night. Our only scare comes at like 11 o'clock. I'll show you guys, we keep a backup tarp on hand at all times to do that. We got our awesome setup as always. You guys have seen it many, many times on the channel. We're rocking the turntable booth as always. We got our Rain 12s, S9. We're running sound switch. We have our nice LED sign up front. We only have four of these little S4s ready to go just to put a little light underneath the table and over there. We brought the awesome brand new tubes. You saw them last night at the prom. They were amazing. The both lighting 360 Titan tubes, I think is what they're actually gonna be called. These things are nuts. We're gonna put four of them around here, four of them up top. We're gonna have some awesomeness tonight. On the audio side, we have the LD Systems Maui 44 G G2s, these speakers kick butt. And we have our totems over here with our MH150 spots on top. And we brought an awesome little Ego power, battery powered fan to keep us nice and cool tonight. On the back rack side, you guys have seen this before. This is my custom built back rack. Yamaha uh, 12 channel mixer, uh, Audio Technica 3000 4th gen mics, as same as we had over at the ceremony, Thurman power conditioner, DBX drive rack PA2. And that's it, uh, Windows computer, Windows gang. And uh, we brought some, we brought some cool stuff for later on. Brought some foam sticks. We're gonna have a good time. By the great and sovereign state of North Carolina, it is my honor to all be able to pronounce you husband and wife. James, you may kiss your bride. Woo! All right, all right. Everyone, everyone, welcome to the reception portion tonight for Emily and JT's wedding. Can I hear it for our newlyweds out there this evening? Let's try this again real quick. Is this side of the room ready to get this party started tonight? All right, this side's bigger, but is this side ready to get this party started tonight? Let me hear, let me hear. Direct your attention to the doors. I got a little bit of people to introduce into the wedding reception this evening. DJ outside for me. Can you drop that track for me? Help me welcome the first group here. We have JT's parents, and that is Doug and Mary. Right behind them. Help me welcome in Emily's dad, Tim, accompanied by his wife, Martha. Let's keep them hands going for Emily's mom, Jeanette, accompanied by her husband, Andy. Let's move on into our wedding party. First up, we have Will, Nicole, and Donald. Right behind them, we have Abby and Holden. Let's give it up now for Brittany and James. Let's give it up for Christina and Jacob. I need some big noise here. Let's welcome in our best man, Robert, our maid of honor, Alexa, and our man of honor, Nick. <laughs> Family and friends, can I kindly ask for you to get on up out of your seats? I need you guys to get on up, get on up. Stand up, stand up for me one time. This right here is the reason we all came here this evening. Make some noise, clap your hands, scream and shout as my heart to introduce. Mr. and Mrs. Morton!
your skills, share your skills, let's go. Slow it down real quick here. You brought that special sum of a view. But don't think so, I see what I get there. I hope it's a dead for the Prince of Bel Air. All right, guys, that is the end of a two day marathon. We finished it off with the wedding here at Chickadee. They do like a Christmas thing and they like left a lot of the white lights up. Looks really cool, really adds to the venue at night. I know the question you guys are probably all wondering when are the tubes going live? Well, the tubes will be live for pre-order on May 4th, which is probably before this video is even out. So if you were not on our newsletter at bowflightingusa.com, you missed out on the pre-orders, but they will be dropping sometime in May, I believe around May 14th. There'll be an official video launched on the channel for the drop when they're gonna be live on the website and all that. So these tubes are coming soon. I wanna give you guys some thoughts real quick. One, the feet are dope. Two, completely underestimate the fact that we need stands for these. So we lucked out last today having a balcony above us and yesterday we uh, jerry-rigged the gravity stands to do it. And for you guys wanting to know about battery life on these, let's see where we're at today. Uh, so this one's at 56%. And that's about the exact same we had last night. So last night we ran for about six hours. We ran for about six hours today and we were about 50 to 60% battery on all the tubes. So you can probably expect to easily get 10 hours of battery out of these tubes. We will be doing more extensive testing on the battery life on these, but really cool stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching the whole entire video at this point. And um, if you are watching it, Make sure you put hashtag squad in the comments down below. That way I know who the loyal subscribers are. But anyways, bothlightingusa.com. Make sure you like this video. Comment down below what you thought of these sick tubes and these setups that we're doing. And uh, hit the subscribe button. And like always, guys, it's DJ Rick Webb. Keep the record spinning. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.